Yo, what up? Josh here from Budget Church Live Streaming. There are a lot of choices you can make in gear, but if you're just starting out, I'm guessing that some of your thoughts are along the lines of, how much do I really have to spend to make sure that I'm getting a quality live stream? Well, I'm going to show you a setup today that costs just under $1,000. It centers around the A10 Mini Pro, the Panasonic G85, this monitor for a multi-view, and your existing soundboard for audio. I'll have links to all the gear in the video description. If none of that makes any sense to you at this point, make sure to watch my previous video where I talk about all the essentials to getting started with live streaming. But if it does make sense to you, let's dig into it. First off, the camera, the Panasonic G85. It's a bit of an older model, but it sells on eBay for about $400 for the body and the lens, which is a deal that's hard to beat. Buying used is a great option. Just make sure to check the reviews on the site that you're buying from to make sure that you're buying from a reputable seller. If you really don't like the idea of used, which I get, you can get it new on Amazon for about $700. The G85 has a micro four thirds sensor, which is the smallest I would go for a church live stream. It will hinder the amount of light you can pull into the sensor, but the crop factor means you'll get a lot longer focal length with your lenses, which is a trade-off that a lot of people are good with. You can also throw a speed booster on it, like the ones from Viltrox or Metabones, which allows you to adapt larger, more expensive lenses onto the Micro Four Thirds lens mount. This can be a great way to upgrade your existing setup without having to buy brand new camera bodies. I'll make sure to link those in the description. Of course, if you're running with just one camera, you'll also need a tripod. Tripods come in all shapes and sizes, but if you stick to one that's around the $100 to $150 mark, you'll probably be good to go. The big thing to look for is one that has a fluid head, which is used for video. This is different than a lot of tripods because it will allow you to smoothly pan and tilt the camera for video. It's a must for a live stream. If your setup has just one camera, you're pretty much limited to a standard wide or tight shot of whatever's going on on your stage. And it will be hard to change it without making things distracting for people watching online. Because of that, you're going to want to set up your camera just right in the back center of the room. So that's what I'll do now. Before we can finish up here, we're going to need to check some settings. These are going to be different for every camera, but basically we want to make sure everything is in manual mode and that we're hiding any menu items from our HDMI output. We also need to pick a color profile and some exposure options. This will vary greatly depending on your room and the particular camera you're using. So we won't dig into it now, but just know that you're going to need to set that up before you start using it. Let's move on to the next step, the switcher. But before that, hit that like button if you're enjoying the video so far and hit that subscribe button if you don't want to miss any other great videos coming up. Speaking of things that are great, I've got the A10 Mini Pro here and I cannot hype this thing enough. At $300, this little guy is so powerful, giving you four HDMI inputs, a multi-view output, the ability to stream and record straight from it, and remotely control it over the network. This thing is unstoppable. So let's go ahead and get it hooked up. First, we'll plug in the power cable, which has this nice little locking feature built into it. So we screw it in and then tighten it up. As you can see, we got some lights turning on now and we're just about ready to keep moving. We will plug in a micro HDMI adapter into our camera and then an HDMI cable into that. We will run that over to HDMI input one right here on the back. You wanna make sure that your camera and the switcher are fairly close together because HDMI is only good for runs up to about 50 feet. After that, you're going to need to use a different type of cable such as SDI, but you'll need an adapter in order to do that. So for now, let's stick with HDMI. Okay, great, so we've got video coming in, but what about audio? Well, you can see we've got a couple audio ports right here labeled mic one and mic two. For the purposes of this, I'm going to assume that you already have a soundboard in your church that works. So we're just going to take an output from that and run it into your switcher. Basically, we just need a mix, whether the one in the house or a separate mix box, and an output to run over here and convert into a headphone jack. So we'll just go ahead and take that, and then we'll plug it in right over here into mic one. Now you can see a few more ports along the back here. First, we have the network port. This is so that we can actually control our switcher from a computer on the same network. We'll hook this up in a second. Then we have our USB-C port. This is so that we can plug a hard drive in to record directly to that. Then we've got our multi-view. This is an output that's going to go to the monitor that I have sitting right over here on this side. We'll set that up next. All we need to do is plug in the HDMI cable from our monitor into this side. And then we'll plug the other side into our monitor. And voila, now that everything's hooked up, we've got our switcher, we can have our camera running into it and we can see it here on the multi-view. 
We also have our soundboard plugged into it, so we'll be getting audio from the room. Now, what if you want to have slides and lyrics showing up? Well, all you have to do is plug your current presentation computer, running ProPresenter or ProClaim or whatever, into one of the other HDMI inputs. That'll show up as another input here on the multi-view, and you can just switch to that using these buttons here. Here's a quick rundown of the multi-view. Up here you see your program. That is what is actually going to your stream, whether it be YouTube, Facebook, or even a recording that's plugged in. Right here is your preview screen. This is what you think is going to be up next in your views. You can change what's being previewed. Right now it's not going to look like anything because we just have black screens. But if you had different cameras, you would see it come up in this area. Here are all of your different sources, one through four. Again, right here is our camera that's actually plugged in, but we could have a second camera, a third camera, maybe ProPresenter or some other type of presenting software. Down here is your media player, and that's going to be any graphics that you've actually loaded in through the software control. Over in this section is your streaming status. You can see right now our streaming is off and our data rate is zero, but if we hit on air, you can see that start to go. Now, I haven't set up a stream key, so you won't see any actual data being transmitted here or the time going up, but this is what it would look like. Similarly, we have our recording status here. If we had a hard drive plugged in, you would see some data here, but there's nothing here for us to see at this point. And finally, over here is our audio. You can see they're all a little bit grayed out, but if we were to go into the software control and actually enable one of these audio sources, that would be the one that we would use throughout this entire stream. So now all of your main components are plugged in, but there's still a little bit of work to do before you can actually start streaming. Remember that network port I showed you on the back? Well, it's time to plug that in and get another second computer that's connected to the same network. Let's do that really quick. All right, so I've got another computer with ATEM software control pulled up on it and it's connected to the same network that my ATEM Mini Pro is connected to. So now let's look at it. So here you can see it recognizes that the ATEM Mini Pro is already on the network. So I'll connect to that. Then I can actually control settings on here with the computer. Changes that I make here will also change on the ATEM switcher itself. The really important things we want to look at here are the streaming settings. You can choose your platform, for example, YouTube, and then put in your stream key you'll actually get this from the YouTube website. After that, you pick your streaming quality. Now the quality that you pick depends a lot on the actual bandwidth that you have from your internet provider. We'll stick with streaming high, but just know that this setting depends a lot on your own internet connection, so play around with it. We can also then choose to record and what the file name would be if we were to capture a video. The other thing we wanna look at is the audio tab. Because we only plugged in audio from our soundboard, we wanna make sure that we actually turn that on. We can do that by clicking here. We also wanna make sure that we're not getting any audio from our cameras. Those are the inputs here if we had more than one. We can see they're off already, which is good. Going back to the input from our soundboard, you can also add EQ and a compressor and change the volume levels. However, you're gonna mostly want to do that in your soundboard because it will probably have more powerful controls. Finally, the last thing we want to look at here is an actual input delay. You'll find that here. The reason we might need this is that video signals actually travel slower than the audio signals. So you might have to delay your audio in order to make it sync up with what's happening on the video. You can change that here by moving this knob. However, a lot of soundboards allow you to do it inside the soundboard itself, which might be a better solution for you. Just decide what works best for you and your church. Okay, so now that we've input a stream key, we've got everything plugged in, we're finally ready to actually start streaming. So how do we do that? Well, on your ATEM Mini or in the ATEM software control, you simply hit the button that says on air and it'll start streaming to YouTube. At that point, you'll have the opportunity to go live within the YouTube studio. Again, we won't dig into that here, but you can look at YouTube's documentation. On the ATEM Mini, that button is right here up in the top right corner. And when I hit that, you can see over here on the multi-view, it actually starts flashing on air. Now, that'll have more useful information if we're actually connected to a YouTube channel with a stream key. Right now, it's just going to flash and scream at us. Right next to that is also the record button. If we had a hard drive plugged into the USB port on the back, we could push this and start recording whatever is going in this program view straight to that hard drive. Now, as a quick overview, on the ATEM, you can actually switch between your different sources here and cut between them to determine what's actually going live to your stream. Now, we obviously only set up one camera, so there won't really be much of a use to do that now, but if you had more cameras, this would be how you would live switch them and choose which one is actually going to your stream. 
Again, we won't dig into that too much here, but we'll probably do a separate video all on the art of switching your live production. And look, just like that, we've built an entire live stream setup for under $1,000. To recap, the switcher is $300. The G85 camera used on eBay, 400. The tripod, 100. This monitor, right about 100. And that leaves you $100 for all the extra cables that you'll need to plug in if you don't have them already sitting around. This covers all the basics, even giving you room to grow. Like I said, live streaming doesn't have to be expensive. You can add another camera, buy some different lenses, add a different mix from your soundboard, stream to multiple sources using a service like Restream.io, or even consider getting the ATEM Extreme, which has eight inputs instead of just four. This allows you to grow tremendously far, but this is a great place to start if you're not quite sure about the whole live streaming thing. Anyone can set this up and run it, and it will be super reliable for your church. I hope this helps demystify live streaming a bit for you. If you learned something, leave a comment down below. If there's something you're still curious about, also leave a comment and maybe I can address it in a future video or even just in a reply. I'm glad to have the opportunity to help you learn this art that I enjoy so much. Until next time.